then you've got, you are double trouble for the devil because you can back him off. <clears throat> Here in Luke one thirty five. The angel speaking here to Mary, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, everyone say Holy Ghost, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Under that write Matthew 1.18 and turn to Matthew 1.18. Matthew 1.18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, underscore this, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, in my area, I've talked to a lot of people about the oneness of God, and some received it and some rejected it. But I, I always presented this to them. Because Trinitarians, and basically, you need to understand this because it's really true. Basically speaking, the average Christian on the street believes in one God. They believe in Jesus. They believe that Jesus is God, basically. But it's the theologians that do all of the intricacies, and uh, they go into all of the minute details. <clears throat> the Trinitarian doctrine is that there is a Father, Son, we'll do it this way. There is a There is a Father, there is a, a Son, and there is a Holy Ghost. Three separate entities, co-equal, co-eternal from the beginning. That in itself is nonsense, because of necessity a Son is begotten of a Father. A Son cannot be co-equal, co-eternal with the Father. It's ridiculous. But they believe there is a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Three separate entities, co-equal, co-eternal, from the beginning. So I've said to them, if there is a Father, a Son, and a Holy Ghost, and the Bible says that Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost, what right does this one have to claim the fathership? And they're confused. They say it's a mystery. Well, it's a mystery because it doesn't exist. I mean, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The Bible says the Holy Ghost, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then this one does not have the right to claim the fathership. And the only sense it could possibly make is that these are one and the same. Here's something else, not particularly part of this lesson, but I take delight in knowing this, okay? <clears throat> How is it, in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, everything reproduced after its own kind, everything seed with it was in itself, and God saw that it was good. Everything, its seed was in itself, from fish, fowl kind, animal kind. Now, <clears throat> So you've got fish kind, you've got fowl kind, and you've got animal kind. And then you've got man. How is it nothing can breed out of its own kind? It's a law of genetics. There is nothing that can be done about it. For example, I grew up in Iowa. I used to detassel corn, hybrid corn in the summertime. The hybrid corn is a hybrid strain but there is no viability within that hybrid strain. In order to keep that corn hybrid, producing the extra big ears and innumerable grains of corn on each ear, they have to keep tampering with it in order to keep the hybrid strain. If you know anything about flowers or gardening and hybrid tea roses, hybrid tea roses are some of the most beautiful flowers in the whole world as far as I'm concerned, but 
the hybrid strain is grafted into the wild rose root structure. If you don't know how to deal with, with hybrid tea roses, they will go back to the wild state. If you don't keep tampering with that hybrid corn and keep, keep that thing together, that strain, it'll go back to just the wild state or the wild corn before the hybridation took place, okay? Because there's a law in genetics, nothing can reproduce after its own kind. That being a law of God in creation, how is it that the Spirit of God could overshadow a virgin in the hillside country of now a Roman province called Judea, and with no man touching her, she could conceive? How is that true? How could that be? How is that possible? Because no species can breed out of its own kind. The reason that Mary could conceive by the overshadowing of the Spirit of God is she was not fish kind, not animal kind, not fowl kind. She was God kind, same species. That's how she could conceive. We are God kind. We are not animal kind. We are not fish kind. We are not fowl kind. We are God kind. I didn't evolve from some lower form of life. God himself shaped me into what I am and breathed into me the breath of life. And I am a living soul. Clap your hands for a moment. There's revelation here. There is understanding here. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you because you are God. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. So let me ask you the, the, the great question. How many gods are there? You don't seem very positive about that. Say it again. Say it one more time. What is his name? Jesus. Shout that name for a moment. Jesus. And if I keep going, we'll have church, so I better keep teaching, okay? I can feel the presence of God among you people. Wonderful to feel the brush of angels' wings in this place, the touch of the Master's hand. God is in this place. So here... <clears throat> Why don't you just um, lift your hands for a moment and just, we're coming to, to the, the end of this particular lesson. But once again, just ask God for revelation understanding to come into you because something happened just a few minutes ago. I want that revelation of that same species to be a part of your life forever. Revelation understanding. God, that we will have so much to shout about. We have so much to dance about. We have so much to sing about. We have so much to preach about because of this revelation, this glorious understanding. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. So under that particular verse, 1 and 18, Right in there, John 3, verses 34, John 3, 34, and then turn to John chapter 3. We could have church here tonight, couldn't we? Can you feel the presence of God? John 3 and... 34. <clears throat> Here in 34, the Bible says, For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the, the Spirit by measure unto him. Underscore, God giveth not the Spirit of measure unto him, meaning Jesus. The Spirit of God is given to us by measure. We have a measure of the Holy Ghost. But Jesus... The Spirit was given to him without measure. And there's a reason for that. 
Then under that verse, 34, write 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16, and turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, am I reading the C? I'm in 2 Timothy, I'm sorry. 1 Timothy. Three sixteen. <clears throat> Underscore this whole verse. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It says the mystery of godliness, not the mystery of God. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Who was received up into glory? Jesus. Under that verse, write Colossians 2 and 9. Colossians 2 and 9. But while we're here, let's work also with Colossians 1 and 15. It's just a page in front of 2 9. Here, in Colossians 1 and 15, it says, Who, referring back to Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Then verse 19, for it pleased the Father, or the Spirit, that in him should all fullness dwell. Wherever you see the word Father, you can insert temporarily insert the word Spirit, because that was the Father, that holy thing, that shall be born of thee. <clears throat> shall be called the Son of God, or the body of God. Powerful. For it pleased the Father, or the Spirit, that in him, Jesus, should all fullness dwell. Now, if you go from there to Colossians 2.9, this is, this is just powerfully, succinctly, simply stated. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus was literally the fullness of God, the creator, because God was the